A lovely rainy day and a nice chauffeured car. You say you're a fake Zhongshanese, but you're not a fake Chinese. <laughs> right? Don't play with words. Okay. I'm not playing with words, you are. What I noticed that when I went to the Philippines, I went to northern Cebu. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like three hours outside of the main city. And it's, um, it's this tiny little fishing town. And they only speak uh, the, the local language and a little bit of English there. And I met this young Chinese uh, family. Yeah, a little girl, and, and uh, they spoke very broken English. And they were scared because they couldn't get back into the city. There were no buses left. And I had rented a car, so they came up to me and they said, uh, you know, hey, can you give us a ride back into town? And, of course, it was really broken English and very bad accent. And because I had been working in China, I, I could understand it and put it together. So I gave them a ride, but I realized, I remember, like, back home near Disneyland, most of the Chinese people would come to the states in these large tour groups because they didn't have the language ability and, or they, maybe they were just scared about getting around and, but I'm seeing less and less of that I mean it seems like more and more Chinese are traveling on their own you know even our students they say oh I went to Bali or I went to Thailand or you know I went to Dubai I went to Europe and it wasn't part of a thing I just booked it on my on the website myself and took off. The Chinese are coming. And I mean that literally. They're coming to every country in the world. They are traveling more than any other group and they are spending a hell of a lot more money than any other group. And the world is not ready for them, especially America. America is not ready for them at all. People use their new language skills and that they've invested all this time and energy in, not just for business, but they do it for traveling. The three cores of my students are Chinese business people, families looking to travel, and children uh, studying for the Gaokao. There's no stopping them. They're coming, and we need to be prepared to make some of that money. As per the latest World Tourism Barometer released by the United Nations World Tourism Organization, Chinese tourists recorded more than 142 million international departures in 2017. China maintained its leading role and grew in the global tourism market with outbound tourists spending $258 billion in 2017, accounting for one-fifth of the world's total spending on tourism according to a World Tourism Report. So to give you an idea how much money that is, the number two nation in the world is the United States with 135 billion in international travel. That's about half of what China is spending throughout the world. In all, the whole world is traveling more. It's about a one and a half trillion dollar industry every year worldwide. And uh, a lot of that is made up of the Chinese. And they are learning English so that they can you know, two or more on their own, obviously, but uh, countries are not learning their customs and their language to support these incoming tourists. The most popular destinations are Europe and Africa last year. Africa, a lot of people going to Africa from China. Uh, Denmark was particularly higher in Europe. Tour spending was grew notably in Spain, the second largest tourism destination after France in 2017. The number one tourist city in the world is still Bangkok, and that's because a lot of Chinese like to go there on vacation. Tourism is great for the economy. It, you know, you more money coming in from other countries, you want to reduce the trade deficit, have more tourists come into your country. America is failing in this. America is still the number one destination for foreign students to come. In addition to the students, uh, immigration is high. It has excellent investment opportunities for the newly, uh, newly rich Chinese. But as far as tourists coming and enjoying, you know, a nice vacation, most Chinese are scared of America. They see on the news gun violence and school shootings. People want to go to LA and Disneyland. Why would you do that? You can go to Shanghai now. New York, too far, and they can go shopping in Hong Kong. Now, I'm an American. I love my country, and I know better that America isn't as dangerous as some people say it is, you know. But, you, know you can go there and have a great time and not be in any trouble. But compared to China, America is a very dangerous country. China is one of the safest countries in the world. And the Chinese tourist values safety and convenience over anything else. You live by? <laughs> As an English speaker, I can travel to most places in the world and there'll be infrastructure for me. There'll be people at hotels and taxi cab drivers and 
restaurants that speak a little bit of English and I can enjoy my vacation time there. Uh, the, the world has really invested in that so that they can capture the tourist money that comes into those countries. Uh, America is not prepared for uh, all this Chinese money that uh, is potentially there for the taking. Most five-star hotels in, in America do a really good job of hiring international staff, language translation ability, they're pretty good. But if you go under a five-star to a four-star, it's hit or miss. Three-star, definitely not. And most of these Chinese tourists are going to be spending money, but they're not gonna be spending all their time in five-star hotels. They're gonna want to spend some time in you know, some nature reserves and lodges and, and uh, they'll be doing road trips and staying in, you know, motor lodges and shit like that. And there's no infrastructure for them other than their own broken English. If they go out to a dinner at a restaurant, there's no one that can help them order meals unless they have uh, picture menus. I love these massage chairs. Uh, I'll give you another example. Um, renting a car. I mean, Chinese driver's license are accepted in many states including my home state of california so uh chinese tourists can fly into la rent a car and drive out to las vegas go up to san francisco see see the sites and many of them do this sorry i gotta pay for it so this chair proves my point i mean i'm in the middle of china it's not a it's in chinese it's not in any kind of touristy city at all but Please scan the QR code. Thank you. And even here, they have an English translation. You rarely see that in the States. Outside the major cities, you're not going to see things like that. Okay, so while I'm here getting my back rubbed, I might as well tell you, um, back to the car rental thing. You drive into LA, you got all the big car rental companies, National, Hertz. Um, all those car companies are actually here in China too. You got Hertz and Avis. Not many Chinese people are comfortable renting from those companies because most of the services are in English. There's very few uh, multilingual people that staff the, uh, the desks there. But there is one, I can't remember the name of it, uh, find out, but there's one company near LAX that caters directly to Chinese tourists. Um, and they have you know Chinese translations and contracts. They have people who speak Chinese at the front desk and they're making a killing Now look at airlines, for example, uh, American carriers uh, specifically, they, they're starting to drop many of their China services. Uh, the United is canceling the Chicago to Shanghai run. That's a long trip. Because they are supposedly not profitable, they're spending too much money on fuel and they can't compete with the lower cost Chinese carriers who are doing more and more international business. And there's many reasons for that. The Chinese are modernizing their fleet. Part of it, but the government actually subsidizes the industry quite a lot. China is also starting to produce their own aircraft to compete with Boeing and Airbus. And that's coming in here soon. Now I have flown throughout the world and I've used many airlines. I've, I've used Chinese airlines, Hong Kong Airlines, China Southern, EVA, which is a Taiwanese airline. Um, and I've flown United and American. And I gotta tell you, the American carriers are terrible. The service quality on the Chinese carriers is above and beyond that of the American carriers. Not only do they provide services for the Chinese tourists, but they also provide services for Western tourists and Middle Eastern tourists. They have different menus, Western and Chinese menus, you know, different types of food. The entertainment has got uh, Western movies and a very substantial library of uh, Asian uh, entertainment. You fly on American Airlines, the service is terrible. It's not very comfortable. I feel like the planes are older. What they need to do rather than just drop it all together is if they're okay, it's gonna cost a little bit more, but differentiate yourselves from the competition by providing more services that cater to an international crowd. That's how you're going to compete against the Chinese carriers. And it's not just for airlines, that's for car rentals, that's for hotels, that's for restaurants, that's for anything that is trying to capture an international tourist. The people that I do know that have gone to the States and that have 
been there on vacation and they, they have a great time. They say, oh, it's not dangerous and the food is fantastic and the people are very friendly. However, they always give comments about how it can be improved and to uh, make it a better experience for not just people from China, but people from all over the world. I got here uh, a couple of comments from uh, a few of my friends who have been to the States. It's very weird for Americans to put ice in everything. Uh, for Chinese, that's very strange. Um, the Chinese like piping hot water <laughs> in everything. And one mentioned um, Chinese visitors struggle to find a hotel with a tea kettle in the room or a restaurant that serves hot beverages besides coffee or hot chocolate. Many have written complaints online saying that whatever drink they order, it always comes with ice cubes. I mean, at least put a hot water kettle so they can drink their tea in the hotel, in the hotel room. And they do say that people are very friendly. Here's a comment here. I feel that people from the South are more friendly to strangers than people from the North. <laughs> people are ready to help strangers because they live in a society that people trust each other. And that is great to see. The general consensus is that people from the South will give you the shirt off their back. And in my experience, that is true too. Anyways, I can go on and on and on about this. But my point is that the Chinese tourism industry is growing not just domestically but internationally they are leaving to travel the world and they're coming back to China and sharing their experiences more than just the tour group you know style of traveling say oh I went to Seoul Korea and went shopping well everyone's done that here in China so they're looking for more interesting experiences there's an opportunity for collaboration there's an opportunity for business if you not just study a little bit of the language, but also understand the culture a little bit. Good day. The week's almost over, but I got me a little scotch to throw down the end of the night. Cheers. Mm.